Okay, so welcome to Unit 5, Quadratic Equations and Functions. And so um, our lesson 1 is called Connecting Zeros, Roots, and X-Intercepts. And I will let you know right now that zeros are equal to roots, which are equal to X-intercepts. So they're all the same thing. And... Um, yeah, so that's what this lesson is going to be about. So there should be no surprises from now on. So the first thing we're going to talk about are functions. And so a function is a relationship between x and y, where for every x, there is one y. So this may seem a little confusing at first, but if we think about it um, in terms of something else, we might be able to get a better grasp of it. So let's think about a function as a vending machine. So in a vending machine, we could have a chocolate bar. And we could say that chocolate bar is equal to a dollar, or is worth a dollar. Uh, we could have a bag of chips. And those chips also cost a dollar. And we could have a pack of gum. And let's say that gum is 50 cents. Okay, so this is something that we've all seen before, so it's something we kind of get, and it makes sense to us. So we can think of, say, our chocolate bars are our x's, and our prices are our y's. For every different item in the vending machine, they are equal, or they relate to one cost. It's okay that chocolate bars and chips both relate to one dollar, but chocolate bars can only relate to one dollar, and chips can only relate to one dollar. Because in a vending machine, it wouldn't work if we also had chocolate bars, the same chocolate bar, for a different price. Right? That wouldn't make sense to us. Chocolate bars can't equal both a dollar and two dollars. So. This would not be part of our function. It's only a function if each different x is equal to one and only one y. And so we can draw this as a graph too. We can have a graph that might look like this, or a graph that might look like this. So these all work because for every x, it's equal to 1y. Every x is equal to 1y. If we had a graph that looked like this, this would not be a function because for x here, we have two different y's. And we can test this using what we call the vertical line test. And that's when you imagine a line going across your graph and if the graph touches your line in more than one place at a time, that means it's not a function. So for example, in this one, up here, it only touches our graph in one place. If we were to have it here, the graph touches our vertical line in two places. So it's not a function. Now when we write a function, we write it like this. Just like they have here. And when we say a function, or when we're reading a function, read it as f of x or f at x. So both of those are okay to say when we're talking about functions. And when we write a function equation, we usually write it something like this. And so you'll notice that our f at x right here is basically just replacing the y in our usual equation, like that. And so because it's replacing the y in our usual equation, we can actually treat a function a lot like an equation. And we'll see that right when we go down to example one. So example one says, find the zero of the function f or fx is equal to 7x minus 21. So the 
the zero of the function is just where f of x is equal to zero. So all we do to find the zero is we make the function equal to zero. And then when we do this, we can just solve it just like our normal factoring problems that we had done in the last unit. So we'll add 21 to each side. And we'll divide each side by 7. And we get x is equal to 3. Okay. So 3 is the 0 of the function. Okay. So we're going to skip the next two pages. And that brings us to example two. So example two is just a fill in the blank. And this is really important because this is going to be like your notes for this uh, section. It's the meat and potatoes, of course. So the zeros of the function, the x-intercepts of the graph of the function, and the roots of the corresponding equation y is equal to zero are the same numbers. Okay, so maybe put a star next to that because that's going to be really important. Okay? And then we can just continue our notes here. So the graph of f at x is equal to x squared minus x minus 6. This is a picture of it right here. It has the x-intercepts. And we can find our x-intercepts just by looking at our graph right now. So we can see that they are 3 and negative 2. And our y-intercept here is just negative 6. Okay? And so the function, we can factor our function equation into these two factors. And then it's really easy for us to find the zeros from there. Negative 2 and 3. And this equation x squared minus x minus 6 is equal to 0, we would just factor normally. So we treat it the same way as we did with the function, where we find that our factors are x plus 2 and x minus 3, which means our roots are the same. Okay? So let's do example 3 now. So what I would like everyone to do is we're going to put some things into our graphing calculator. So in y1, we'll put 2x squared minus 7x plus 3. And in y2, we can put 0. Okay, so let's pull up our graphing calculator. And let's just... There we go. Okay, so let's go two x squared minus seven x plus three, and we have zero in here already. So we'll graph it. And so if if your graph doesn't look like mine, if you go to zoom 6, that'll set all your settings to the same thing I have. And so let's find our x-intercepts. So you'll notice that I have y2 is equal to 0 here. And our x-intercepts are where our graph uh, 2x squared minus 7x plus 3 crosses the x-axis. And y is equal to 0 is our x-axis. It's the exact same line. And so all you have to do is find the intersects between these two lines. So you'll go second, trace, intersect, which is 5. And all you have to do is hit enter three times. So enter, enter, enter. And that finds that 
one of our x-intercepts is 0.5. So we'll write that down. Okay. Now we have to find another one because we can see that we have another x-intercept right there. So we'll go second trace 5 for the intercept. And now this time, you'll notice that our blinker is still where it was before. What we want to do is we want to move it somewhere over here. Because when we're calculating intercepts, it's going to automatically jump to whichever intercept is closer. So we have to make sure that it's closer to the other one than to the one we just found. So you can move it over. And I'll hit enter three times again. We get that x is equal to 3. Okay. There's another way you can do this, but a lot of people find this way a little bit harder, but I'll show you just in case. So, in this way, we don't have to have anything in y2, so we just have our y1. That looks like this. And we're going to use the zero feature. We can go second, trace, zero, two. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to find where this graph crosses the x-intercept. And so if you notice, it says left bound here. That means that our little blinker has to be to the left of the intercept. So it's right there. So we can see that it's to the left. So we'll hit enter. Now you'll notice that it says right bound. And so we have to move our blinker to the right of the intercept. So let's move that over. And then you hit enter twice. So you'll see that it found the same thing as it had before. So let's use the zero feature to find our second x-intercept. So go second trace zero. And it's left bound, so we have to make sure it's to the left of this intercept. So that's good. Enter. And then for right bound, we have to move it back up across the x-axis to the right of it. Right there and we get x is equal to 3. Both of these methods work just fine, but a lot of people find um, the way where you have y2 is equal to 0 to be easier, but it's a personal preference. Okay, so now we can use our x-intercepts to find the factored form of this equation. So our graph looks something kind of like this. So to find the factored form of an equation, you write the x-intercepts. Now, if you have something that looks like this with a decimal, the first thing you want to do is change it into a fraction. So we go like that. Okay? And then all we're doing is we're taking everything that's on the right side of the equation and moving it over with the x so that it's equal to 0. So we'll multiply both sides by 2, and we get 2x is equal to 1. We subtract 1 from both sides, and we get 2x minus 1 is equal to 0. And this one's a lot easier. We just get to subtract 3 from both sides, and we get x minus 3 is equal to 0. And these are our two factors for our equation. So if we were to FOIL these out, we would find that we would get this here to equal this. One thing you have to remember when um, you're doing this is you definitely want to check to make sure that when you do FOIL it, it becomes that. And one of the easiest ways to do this or to check really quickly is just to think, OK, 2x times x x squared, good, and negative 1 and negative 3 is 3, good. Normally, as long as you've done your math right, if this is good, and this is good, then everything else will be good as well. Okay, so let's move on to the next page. 
So we've learned two methods for finding the zeros of a function. Uh, substituting zero for x and then finding the roots using um, our normal factoring. So maybe I'll write factoring here. This is definitely the method you would want to use for written response on an exam because it shows more work. And on an exam for the written response, the more work you show, the better. Okay. The other method we've learned is graphing the function and then finding the x-intercepts of the graph. This is good for multiple choice and checking work because it's quick. As long as the equation is typed in correctly, you'll get the right answer, but it doesn't show a lot of work. So um, if, say, a question was in the written response and out of two or three marks, doing this would not get you your two or three marks. Okay, so it's important that you know, learn how to do both. So if we move on to example four, um, we can find the roots of the following equation. And this is just kind of like a review from unit four. So we're just going to do C here. So what's the first thing we should notice about this equation? Uh, the first thing is that it has a GCF, greatest common factor. So we'll take that out. The next thing that we should notice about this part is that it's a difference of perfect squares. So we'll go okay, 2, x minus 2, x plus 2, which is 0. And so the roots are x is equal to 2, and x is equal to negative 2. Okay, so this should feel like review from unit 4. This is based just a normal factoring problem. Okay. We go on to example five. We can do a. So the first part is to find the zeros. And so let's find them algebraically. So we'll go 5x squared plus 15x minus 20 is equal to zero. And one of the first things we should notice is that we have a greatest common factor of 5. So we'll pull that out. And then it's just a normal factoring problem again. So we'll go x plus 4, x minus 1, makes the entire thing equal 0. And we set each of the factors to zero because of our zero product law. And we can find that x is equal to negative 4 and x is equal to 1. So this is our answer for part 1. For part 2, they ask, find the y-intercept of the graph. And so when you're looking for the zeros or the x-intercepts, Basically, what we're doing is we're making y equal to 0. And so when we're looking to find the y-intercepts of the graph, we are looking to set x to 0. So we can write let x equals 0. And then we go 5, 0 squared, plus 15, 0, minus 20. And then we find that the y-intercept is equal to minus 20. And this is our answer. So one way to find the y-intercept, um, if you have your graph handy, I'll show you how to do this as well. So go 5x squared plus 15x minus 20. And I'll change our windows because we already know the answer is um, the y-intercept is at minus 20. So we'll change our y minimum to minus 25. Okay. 
And all we have to do is go second trace value. And because we know that the y-intercept happens when x is equal to 1, all we have to do is make x equal to, oh, sorry. We know that the y-intercept happens when x is equal to 0. So all we have to do is make x equal to 0 and hit enter. And we find that y is equal to minus 20. So that's another way, quick way to do it. One thing that you may have noticed is that if y is equal to minus 20, minus 20 is right there, because this is the only term that doesn't happen, that isn't multiplied by x. And when x is 0, all those terms that have x's in them, this, becomes 0. So this is another way that you can look for the y-intercept really quickly. But you have to be a little bit careful if you're just assuming it's that last term. Because, for example, if you look at c, and you go to find the y-intercept, you might just think that the y-intercept is 1, but if you go x is equal to 0, so you can write that like this when uh, you're writing that about a function. And we'll go 2, 0, and we'll find that 0. 0 plus 1 equal to 0. Because you're multiplying everything that by 2x, and x is equal to 0, it becomes 0. So 1 is not one of our y-intercepts. So it's something that you should be careful about, and just know that just because there's a, a term at the end without an x, it doesn't mean that that's going to be the y-intercept. Okay, so let's go on to the next page. So, and we'll do sample 6 to B. So, for each of the functions, use a graphing calculator to sketch the graph. So, we'll do that first. Move over here. Okay, 4x to the third minus 7x squared minus 4x plus 7. Okay. Let's graph it. And let's just hit zoom 6 so that all of our graphs look the same. So our graph looks something kind of like this. which is different than usual. The next thing they ask is find the zeros of the function as exact values. So let's find the zeros by using our calculator. So we can go and let's use the method where we make y2 equal to 0. We'll make a big fat line too. Perfect. So we go second, trace, intercept. And let's work from left to right. So we'll get our blinker nice and close to that one. Enter, enter, enter. And we find that our one x-intercept here is negative 1. And let's also find that our second one Enter, enter, enter. This one is one. And our last x intercept we'll get this one nice and close to it. Enter, enter, enter. is 1.75. Okay. So, uh, find the zeros of the function as exact values. This one isn't an exact value, but we know that 1.75 in a fraction is 7 over 4. 
And then the last part is to write the function in factored form. So we know that x is equal to negative 1, x is equal to 1, and x is equal to 7 divided by 4. And then we want to just make everything equal to 0. So we go plus 1, plus 1, plus 1 is equal to 0, minus 1, minus 1, x minus 1 is equal to 0. And luckily for us, this one has already been changed to a fraction. If it was still in decimal, the first thing we would do is change it to a fraction. But we can multiply both sides by 4. So we have 4x is equal to 7. And then we subtract 7 from both sides. 4x subtract 7 is equal to 0. And so we know that our four or our three factors are x is equal to x plus one, x minus one, and four x minus seven. Perfect. And so like I said before, we can kind of test this by going, okay, x times x times 4x squared, or by 4x, is 4x to the third. Perfect, it works with that. And then 1 times negative 1 times negative 7 is positive 7, and that works with that. So that's usually a really good indication that we have it correct, or that we're done, I guess. So. That finishes up the notes section of your book, but we're going to add some extra notes that are actually part of the homework. So if everyone flips to question six in the homework, we're going to do two of these together. So this is kind of like the last question we did, except they give us the graph and we get to work with that. So we don't have the equation at all yet. So the first thing they ask for is the zeros of the function. And we're going to be doing b and then c. So the zeros of the function we know are the same as the x-intercepts. So we have negative 2 and 4. The next thing they ask for is the y-intercept, which is negative 16. And so you'll notice that on our graph, the y-axis, the ticks are going by 2. So we have like negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, negative 8, negative 10. So they're moving by 2s instead of 1s. Okay, and then they ask for the equation of the function in factored form. So we're going to start it just like we did our last one. We'll go x is equal to negative 2, x is equal to 4. And then for this one we'll add 2 to both sides. And for this one we'll subtract 4 from both sides. So we have x plus 2 is equal to 0, and x minus 4 is equal to 0. And so the factors we're getting are x plus 2 and x minus 4. And so, sorry, so because they give us the y-intercept, we'll want to test it. And so like we said before, you kind of test it by going you know, testing these two values and these two values. But because they don't give us the original equation, that test doesn't really work for us this time because we have nothing to compare that to. So what we want to do is we want to use our y-intercept to test our equation. And so like I showed you before, you can find the y-intercept by setting x equal to 0. So we'll do that over here. And we'll go 0 plus 2. 0 minus 4, which becomes 2 and negative 4. And 2 and negative 4 is equal to negative 8. But wait a second. On our graph, we have our y-intercept is equal to negative 16. But here, we have it equal to negative 8. 
So to get from negative 8 to negative 16, what we have to do is multiply everything by 2. And we can do that here. Okay? And so this 2 here is basically our greatest common factor that we would be taking out if, this, if we are factoring this from the equation. So now we can put this entire thing and it'll give us this exact same graph. So I can show you that on the calculator right now. So let's go. 2 x plus 2 x minus 4. And we know that our x-intercept is negative 16. So we're just going to change our windows a little bit so that we can actually see that. Perfect. And we can actually test some values to make sure it's the same. So we'll go to second trace, 1 for values. We'll go x is equal to negative 2. Perfect. We can see that that is a y-intercept or an x-intercept. We can go second trace value x is equal to 4. Perfect. We can see that it's a x-intercept, just like we have here. And finally, our last one we'll test is x is equal to 0. And this is perfect. So we get y is equal to negative 16, which is just what we would want. So it's really important that if they don't give you the equation, that you test your factors by checking out the y-intercept and seeing if you need to put in that common factor. So let's do C next. So we can look at graph C and find our x-intercepts. So we have x is equal to negative 2, x is equal to 3, and x is equal to 4. And we can find on our y-intercept that our y-intercept is 24. And so we're going to do the same thing as always to find our factors from our x-intercepts. We go x is equal to negative 2, x is equal to 3, x is equal to 4. And we'll add 2 to both. And this one will subtract 3 from both. And this one will subtract 4 from both. And so we get x plus 2 is equal to 0, x minus 3 is equal to 0, and x minus 4 is equal to 0. So these are our factors. And so because we don't have our original equation, that usual test where we go, oh, does this equal, you know, uh, x to the third? We can't do that. So we're going to have to use our y-intercept. And so we can test that up here. And we'll say x is equal to 0. Then we'll go 0 plus 2, 0 minus 3, 0 minus 4, which gives us 2, negative 3, negative 4. And 2 times negative 3 gives us negative 6 times negative 4 gives us 24. So we know that our common factor, uh, we don't have anything we have to put in the front because it's basically it's 1. You can put a 1 there if you want, but you don't have to. Okay. So this would be our answer in factor form. And this is our 1 for b. And that is lesson one of unit five.